How's it going everyone? It is Cloud Chief, and in today's video, I wanted to get back to basics and talk about hate and aggro with mobs. So to start, I kind of want to get back to the basics and talk about the difference between the aggro list and the hate list. And these aren't to get confused. I know these terms often get tossed around in other MMOs and games, but like they're kind of universal, but for 11 they're definitely not. Aggro is something different than hate is. So aggro in 11 is when you basically aggravate a mob without doing any actions to it. Not all mobs are aggressive or are going to get aggro. There are four basic ways in 11 that you can aggro mobs. First is sight. And that means a mob will have a conal direction in front of it, so it's frontal view, where if you pass in front of it, you will aggravate the mob and the mob will start attacking you. The second way is sound. If a mob aggros to sound, basically making any noise around the mob and any circular pattern with having line of sight. It is important to note that all of these you still need a straight line. So you could be within a sound aggro range, but if there is like a block or something between you, you won't actually trigger it. But as long as it has line of sight and you're within its aggro circle and you have no way of stopping sound, then you would aggravate said mob. The third way is blood aggro, and this happens when your HP is not in white. So if your HP starts to get lower, it first turns to yellow, and then when it gets even lower, it will turn to red. So if your HP is not in white HP, any mobs that aggro to blood aggro will aggro you. Again, they will need a line of sight when your HP is low and be in range to uh, aggro you. And the last basic way that mobs will aggro is by magic. And again, you needs to be in line of sight, but also magic aggro only works with magic that actually consumes MP. So bard songs, ninjutsu, and I think there's some other things, but as long as it doesn't consume NP when you cast the spell, then it won't aggro the mob. So when you aggro a mob, you end up on its aggro list. Only one person can be on a mob's aggro list at any given time. You can't have multiple people on its aggro list. When it aggros someone, it will then try to chase the said person and until that person either zones somehow has gotten out of range and is out of range for long enough time that it can't track the person that it's aggroed or if it kills said person until one of those conditions are met it will stay aggressive going after the person one nice thing about having mobs on an aggression list means that you could have all the mobs attacking one person and then you can support that person. You can cure them, you can do whatever. As long as no actions are taken against the mob, it will only stay on its aggro list for the person who aggroed them and any support for that said person won't irritate the mobs or change its target. So now let's move on to hate and the hate list. So hate is generated whenever an action is performed against the mob. So this could be any JA or magic cast against the mob or anything done. Once someone is on the hate list, a mob is no longer aggressive. If the mob was aggressive to one person and another person does an action to get on the hate list, the aggro list is essentially completely wiped out. It doesn't care anymore about its aggro list. It's now only worried about its hate list. Anyone and everyone that does an action against the mob or does any support for anyone who's already on the hate list will then also be generated on the hate list. The mob will stay aggressive and attack whoever is on top of the hate list and will stay aggressive until either the hate list is completely cleared out by either everyone either dying 
everyone either moving out of range so that way it takes enough time where you drop off the hate list or you zone unless you do some action to get off its hate list it will just keep attacking indefinitely until you're somehow removed most mobs but not all if you just move away and are far enough away and the mob can't do any actions against you for 30 seconds will then drop off the hate list and then they will no longer be aggressive and if it's most mobs and it's moved out of its spawn circle it'll despawn if it's an nm typically it'll just stop and then slowly walk back to its spawn area there are some mobs namely orcs that have something called track by smell and basically that means they are going to track you by scent and there is no way for you to essentially drop off their hate list by getting distance and running unless two things happen. One, either you use the spell or an item that gives you deodorize, which essentially negates your smell so they can't track you by smell anymore, or you go over a body of water because essentially that works the same way. If that happens, then it'll essentially go like normal where you'll have to wait enough time and then they'll eventually drop off the hate list. So you can exploit hate lists by making sure you're near a body of water, typically a river or something. If you run through it and the mob isn't directly on top of you attacking you, typically you can just lose hate and then keep going on your way if that's what you want it to do. Obviously, if you don't want to lose hate, then you need to be careful if you're going near a body of water because you might end up losing hate when you don't really want to, which could cause all kinds of other problems, so be aware of that. So now let's talk about hate and how it's generated. So there are two basic types of hate. These are considered volatile hate and accumulative hate. Volatile hate is typically what happens from when you do JAs. So provoke, flash, and most other JAs will give you a certain amount of what's considered volatile hate. What happens with that is that hate will slowly degrade over time. So if you provoke a mob and then do nothing else to it, eventually that hate will degrade to the point where you might actually drop and no longer be at the top of the mob's hate list, so it might attack someone else. Cumulative hate happens when you actually do damage to the mob, or you're casting spells against the mob, even though Flash itself is volatile hate. Cumulative hate does not degrade. Basically, once you get it set at whatever level, it's going to stay at that level unless the mob is attacking you. If the mob is taking actions against you, you will actually lose cumulative hate. What determines who the mob is attacking is going to be whoever has the highest value of the sum of both of these hates. So, basically, your cumulative hate and your volatile hate whatever they are add it together is your total hate and whoever has the highest total amount of hate is who the mob is going to have attention on so quick talk about amenity gear essentially having positive amenity gear will make all of your actions whether it is volatile or cumulative just gain even more amenity and then obviously having negative amenity is going to accumulate less of both types uh, for said so you obviously want to have positive amenity gear for your tank or whoever's trying to maintain hate and negative amenity on your mages and people who don't want the attention of the mob you should also be aware that there is a cap for both types of hate so in a long fight it's very possible that your white mage is going to cap out on cumulative hate and that it's possible that you might randomly see the mob just start tearing off for the healer and that's typically the reason why. So if that starts to happen, typically you want your tank to try and get more cumulative hate because they ideally shouldn't have too many issues getting volatile hate spike ups between Voke and Flash and other hate tools that they're going to have. Also a note to tanks, 
I've seen some tanks go in and try and pop all their job abilities at once to try and get hate. And while that will give you a ginormous amount of volatile hate, that is also the problem. That it's volatile and it's going to drop and degrade. And if you use all of your JAs, it's eventually going to hit zero and then you don't really have any tools to help pull hate back. So it's highly recommended if you're tanking, especially if it's going to be a long fight, to try and spread your JAs out. If you know the fight's only going to be like a minute long, I can see popping all your JAs. So again, you need to try and play it according to the situation. But most of the time, you kind of want to space out your job abilities and you don't just want to spam them all out as I've seen some people do. So that pretty much wraps up the subject about hate and how it works. There is one small thing I do want to go on a little bit of a rant about, and that is about private servers. So I have quite a few pet peeves about private servers, but the one that really sticks out and is most prevalent in my mind is the fact that private servers do not have or differentiate between an aggro list and a hate list. Basically, if you aggro a mob on a private server, you are on its hate list, and it only has a hate list. So, you can't use the strategy on private servers where you could have your tank run in, aggro all the mobs, and then basically super tank it, and then just focus on one mob, and then, you know, the healer can heal and do whatever support, and you're not going to pull hate on those other mobs because it's just in the aggro list and not in the hate list. So, that's the end of my rant for that. I just felt I should bring that up because I do know uh, some private server people do view and watch my videos and of course this wouldn't be relevant to them because you don't have an aggro list. But you know, it is what it is. But thank you guys for tuning in, thank you for supporting the channel, and may you have success in all you do.